No, we can, uh, they order on the app, they check in. I'm Jim, by the way, Jim Marshall. Jim Popeyes. Hi, it's Jim Marshall of the New Bedford Cable Network and we're here at the Whale's Tooth parking lot to take a look at what the city is doing to keep the vehicles clean. The city has instituted a decontamination program for all city vehicles. Most of the vehicles are obviously city emergency vehicles, whether it be police, fire, EMTs. But we'll take a look today at the process and talk to some folks that are making this happen. Right. So today we're having, uh, we're doing the uh, public safety vehicle uh, vehicular de decontamination. Uh, this is pretty, we've pretty much got this down to a science here. We've been doing this for, we've probably been doing this for about a month. And at the beginning, we didn't have very much equipment. We might have had one backpack sprayer and one electrostatic gun. Uh, since then, we had ordered, you know, a, uh, a large amount of equipment at the, you know, we were out ahead of this at the beginning. And, and then a few weeks ago, all of our foggers, extra backpacks, uh, you know, the canned sprayers had come in. So now, we can really move through here very quickly and get a lot of vehicles done. So you come in, uh, of course, the, we have preferences, the uh, people that are in service are on duty, whether it's police, fire, or EMS. Today, it's just city vehicles. Uh, we have one day a week where it's regional vehicles, so any, any uh, town or municipality from around the South Coast region, they can come in and get their vehicles done, and we've done quite a bit of them. So you come in, you check in, uh, and you bring your vehicle over, open up all your doors, uh, and uh, what happens is they, we concentrate, you know, obviously decontaminating the whole vehicle, but we make sure we hit the high touch areas in the vehicle, door handle, steering wheel, uh, you know, if you have a radio microphone to talk into, uh, anything that would be considered a high touch area, uh, those that get special attention, get sprayed down. You let the, the uh, it's surgical grade disinfectant, so it's gonna kill COVID-19 and any other, you know, biological hazards that you could think of. So let the vehicle sit for 10 minutes while they air dry. And then after that, it sits for another five minutes uh, to get the, you know, there's a little bit of a, um, an odor from it and make sure it's dry and then, then you're on your way. So uh, I think a couple weeks ago, we had actually done, we had actually done close to 300 vehicles in one day. So uh, right now we have, uh, right now I think there's three or four people that are actually spraying. We're going to be doing some additional training over the next couple of weeks. We're going to uh, increase our manpower pool of people that are trained in this decontamination technique. You know, there's a little bit of skill to it uh, as far as, plus you have to wear um, personal protective equipment because it is a chemical you're spraying. So you have to wear uh, air purifying respirator, a Tyvek suit and that. So we're going to be, you know, kind of uh, expanding it, you know, getting more people involved in the training so we can actually, you know, get this going even you know even and even quicker pace especially when we have a lot of vehicles so this is something that we're going to continuously do you know especially while the pandemic is going on and even after that so it's good to have the vehicle contaminated decontaminated on a regular basis especially the ambulances uh police cruisers and obviously the fire truck where the guys the uh, cab of the fire trucks where the guys are getting in and out of the cab they're going on a lot of medical calls so we want to make sure we keep we keep it as disinfected you know, as, pos as possible. And also, this goes on in all the fire stations, uh, police stations as well, uh, you know, to keep those areas decontaminated. I know that um, one of the things, you guys are meticulous when it comes to your vehicles, fire department, police department, the, the vehicles are constantly clean. Did the, the pandemic change uh, the way you think about how the vehicles are clean on a, on a daily basis? You know, b before, before the coronavirus existed, you would every morning, when the crew would come in at 0800, they would do a full decontamination of the cab from the 24 hour shift before. Unless during that shift, there was some reason, you know, to, uh, to do a decontamination. You know, obviously, you know, we've had incidents where there's been like, you know, bed bugs and that we've had to, you know, deal with those issues, making sure that doesn't get brought back to the station. And obviously after every fire, now we decontaminate everybody's gear, you know, for the byproducts of combustion. But now it's gone, you know, way beyond just doing that you know, initial, you know, cleaning of the cab, you know, every morning. Now it's almost after every single call where, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have plenty of great, you know, great chemicals and great disinfectants that we can use, you know, after every call to make sure the cabs stay clean so the guys don't get, 
you know, obviously we know that, you know, there's a, a contagious element to the coronavirus, so we don't want, you know, we want to keep, we want to keep uh, that first domino from falling where one person gets it and then it just gets passed, you know, passed on to other members and not just in the fire department, but other public safety agencies as well. The city, the fire department, the city seems to have been really out front when it comes to this because I know that uh, Travis was telling me before, I mean, you're getting neighboring towns coming in doing this as well. I mean, this is, like I said, it seems the city's really out in the forefront. So, yeah, I remember back in January uh, when this, before this, even before there was even one death from this, you know, Washington State area, I think that was when the first death occurred, and um, DPH and uh, Office of Emergency Medical Services had sent out guidance, so I just uh, an FYI, hey, there's this thing, there's a thing out there called the coronavirus, and you should just be aware of it. Um, so I remember, and that was probably the third week of January, I think, and I, and I remember putting that out, you know, so everybody had an idea, you know, hey, this could, you know, this could become something we don't know, but hey, just, you know, put it on the radar screen. And then, you know, who would have thought way back in January that it would be to what it is today? Nobody, I don't think anybody thought it would be to where it is today. And then every time we had put out guidance or come up with new SOPs, there was, seemed to be like more urgency to it. And, you know, hey, you know, and then we heard about there's going to be a surge and, you know, there's going to be all these things and field hospitals and that. It's like, you know, so... We had to, you know, pretty early on, we started, you know, preparing for this. And not just us, uh, you know, I mean, we have a very close relationship with New Bedford EMS, uh, you know, them as well, obviously New Bedford Police, you know, so we kind of changed the way, you know, the way we respond, how we respond, you know, how we allocate the manpower on these calls and that, and, you know, asking a lot more questions, you know, handing out surgical masks to people before you even really contact them. It's just, it's an, it's, it's an all-inclusive. It's an everyday. It's an everyday thing to keep, to keep our people, you know, safe and to stay up on this. It's just, uh, you know, you find that after a while, every day is the same because this is all that you're, you know, you're dealing with. And then you, then it's like, hey, listen, we get. There's so many other things that go into running a fire department, and it's like, oh, you got to get back to doing that stuff too. And that's almost becoming, it's kind of almost become an afterthought because this is just, it just takes up so much of your. Of, of, of not just, you know, not just mine, but everybody's, you know, time and effort, you know. Um, can you just tell us technically about what goes into decontaminating a vehicle? So um, it starts with the applicator. We find the right applicators that are going to work best for this. We have several. Uh, most of them are electrostatic, which actually um, creates a positive charge on any of the fluid we're putting out, makes it want to cling, uh, go on a much more even surface, and... Um, sticks around a little bit longer. Uh, the contact time is what we're worried about. Every solution that we, you use to decon has to remain wet for a certain amount of time for it to work. Ours is 10 minutes. So we want to make sure we put enough product on and a nice even coat to be able to make that 10 minute contact time. Does different, uh, different vehicles, different process, I guess? So uh, with, with the fire department vehicles, uh, the fire engines, we try and do the cab, uh, focus really on it, but we do all the compartments. We do every of them, every bit of it. Uh, police department vehicles, we do all the interior, uh, the back, and in the trunk space, everywhere it gets sprayed. Anywhere where a person may have contact and may contaminate it, we spray it all. How, um, I don't want to say safe's not the right word, but how long does it last? Or so it's immediate. The problem is once it dries, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, there's no uh, long-lasting effect from the decon solution. We kill everything that's there at the time. If they drive off and get another person in the vehicle, um, it's contaminated again. It has to be redone. As you said, you're doing this on a regular basis. We're doing this at least twice a week. And this is really a thorough decontamination. The, um, the guys on the fire engines, the police officers are actually doing uh, decon of the vehicles themselves at the beginning of their shifts, end of the shifts. They're wiping them down. They're cleaning them themselves. What we're doing is kind of giving it um, a more thorough decon. Places where they might not be able to get and wipe, we're actually disinfecting also. It was impressive when you were talking to me off, off the camera over there. The city of New Bedford's been really aggressive or out in the forefront with something like this. I mean, as you said, you're getting other towns coming. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, to be honest with you, I, it was uh, Chief Kader and Deputy Kruger kind of got out in front of this, I think, right in the beginning with uh, the EMA director, Brian Nobrega. They, um, they started having... Um, treating this like one major incident and every 24 hours is an operational period so they have a meeting every morning 
Um, they discuss the issues and they've been able to get out in front of a lot of the problems before they've happened. And you can see the results. We're in much better shape than a lot of the cities our size. So it's worked. And two other things. You uh, were talking about staffing and you're hoping, well, one thing you've got a couple guys here, but you're, you're looking to get more guys. Yeah, so actually um, we, we have four uh, Pro Board certified hazmat technicians that are, are working for the New Bedford Fire Department right now. Uh, those are the guys we're utilizing because they know decon, they've been trained in decon. Uh, we developed a program that we're going to give very shortly for uh, 10 more members to get trained in this so we can start spreading it out, making sure we get more, more depth in uh, our manpower. And the other thing is, interesting enough, you've got other departments from other parts of the state interested in what you guys are doing. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bristol County Sheriff was assisting us in the beginning. Uh, they've got a lot of issues right now, so they're kind of busy. Um, but they still attended a, a class yesterday. Uh, Bonstable County Sheriffs came in and uh, were interested in the class. I believe Everett Fire is still kicking around here. Uh, they were interested in what we're doing. Um, yeah, they, they, we've been kind of on the forefront on making this happen for vehicle decon. Just for you personally, dealing something different like this uh, must give you a nice feeling of satisfaction. Yeah, you know, the first couple of times. 26, 27 time gets a little old, but yeah, no, we're, we're doing good. We're, we're making it. It's tiring. It, it, it's tiring for these guys. I, I'm hoping to get more guys online because there's a lot of days out here. So uh, we're really, our guys have been running ragged trying to keep up with it. So I'm hoping to get more help out here for them. Sounds good. So. Thank you very much. No problem.